Congresswoman Elaine Lurie is a Democrat from Virginia, and she serves on the Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol, and she joins me now. Well, I guess I want to start by thinking, how do you understand what, what seems like this obviously implausible gap in the official records furnished by the White House? Well, Chris, you know, it's something that the committee received a while back from the National Archives, and it's always appeared very strange, um, and especially because we've had reporting um, from different, you know, senators, other people who have explicitly and publicly talked about the calls they had with the president during that time. So it raises a lot of questions, um, and I think it's really easy to pivot back to the uh, contempt hearing we had last night, because who was with the president during this time? Uh, Dan Scavino was there by the president's side during the events of January 6th. And, you know, we need to understand what events happened that day and who can tell us. Um, I said last night in my comments, you know, what is he hiding? What is he trying to cover up? Who is he trying to protect? Um, so, you know, your reference back to, to Watergate, you know, about 50 years ago, um, a very infamous cover up. This definitely, you know, has overtones of that uh, again, because there's just really no explanation for the seven hours. And if I was to go even further, you know, we've talked a lot uh, in the committee about the 187 minutes, the three plus hours that this was happening on national TV, uh, that the president sat and, and watched this. We understand that he was watching what was happening at the Capitol. And, you know, as someone who's a, a naval officer, I, that's how I spent my career before coming to Congress, you know, what this brings to me is this idea of dereliction of duty. The president has a duty to take care that the laws of the nation are enforced and carried out. And if I think about it, you know, any officer in the military who the president commissions officers in the military, you know, any officer in the military who sat and watched something like this for three hours and took no action, they'd be court-martialed. So, I mean, in my mind, President Trump uh, is it's a dereliction of duty. And if he was a military officer, he'd be facing a court martial for that dereliction of duty under these circumstances. So there's so many questions uh, that the committee is trying to answer. And that's why we need to hear from people uh, like Dan Scavino, who we referred contempt charges on because he's decided he's above the law and he doesn't want to come talk to Congress under subpoena. Yeah, some context for Scavino that seems important. Obviously, he's, uh, he, I think he was at one point the president's caddy. Uh, he then became his social media manager. Obviously, being a social media manager involves, you know, having access to the, the account of the president and, and some close proximity of, his, of, of the phone you're using or his phone. He, there's also a subpoena uh, for his phone records that he's been fighting uh, very hard. The legal mystery of this uh, anonymous objection to it began on January 5th this year when a person only identified as the plaintiff filed a lawsuit contesting a subpoena issued to Verizon by the Special Congressional Committee. U.S. District Chief Judge Beryl Howell said no, and Scavino refiled the complaint under his name in the same case on Friday. So the, the committee not having access to an actual call log has gone about subpoenaing phone records. Dan Scavino is fighting that. How important is that aspect of the investigation? Well, all of these pieces, um, it's really important that we have them to put them together um, to determine what was the web of communications that happened that day. Um, so it's not just Dan Scavino, but there's others who had, we think, and we understand through testimony, you know, we've had 800 witnesses come talk to us. We know about other people who talked to the president uh, that day, the people who talked to his chief of staff, uh, Mark Meadows. And, you know, although those people have objected to coming before the committee to this point, we have a lot of information about the calls and communications that happened that day. And so this is yet another piece of painting that picture of everything that went on, who he talked to, and ultimately, what is he covering up? In the vote to refer uh, contempt to the Department of Justice uh, for these two witnesses, one of them uh, being uh, Dan Scavino last night, you said uh, Merrick Garland, Attorney General Merrick Garland, do your job. It was quite a striking moment. What, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, this is not the first time the committee's come together that we referred contempt charges. It's been over three months um, since we referred those charges uh, relative to Mark Meadows. And, you know, there is a constitutional duty to appear uh, before a subpoena in Congress. And, you know, Mr. Meadows has, you know, claimed executive privilege and all of these other things, as has Dan Scavino and others. And the truth is there's a process for that. They have to come before the committee. They have to legitimately lay out those items that they believe are covered by privilege. And the committee will consider those things one by one. Uh, but just not appearing and just um, essentially rejecting or ignoring a subpoena from Congress is against the law. That's why we referred contempt charges. Um, the Department of Justice did move for Bannon, um, but they've been intransigent. They haven't moved yep. yet, haven't done anything for, for Bannon, and there's 
two new important witnesses here. And, you know, it wasn't just me. Others on the committee said, you know, the Department of Justice needs to move swiftly and do their job so that, you know, we can do our job and analyze this information as part of our investigation.